show. Check it out tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. Central, right here on Fox Sports Net. First to 10 at the 43 for the Bulldogs. McCown, play action. In trouble, finally. And out of bounds. That's the first time he has had any pressure. And that is as much as anything else. Maybe a coverage sack, if you will, Gary. As the secondary did a nice job. Sabula chased him out of bounds. Exactly right. The defense did a good job that time of matching up. And Luke McCown, I tell you, he just looks very poised and confident back there. Just ran the bootleg pass to perfection there, just running it out of bounds. Hey, if you don't have anything down the field and you can't turn up a run, it, just take it to the sideline. See the numbers he has on the day. Pretty good job of that young quarterback getting in and getting the job done again. Last year, he threw for 418 yards and three touchdowns against Miami. So he's seen an awful lot in his first year and a half here of college football. Second and 13. McCowan going deep here for Daig. Out of his reach. Pass intended for Daig. Well, I'm not sure Daig is full speed off that ankle. Looked like he's kind of kind of favoring a little running down the sideline. Speedy wide receivers is not going to probably not have to have the as much speed as he would have earlier in the ball game. But if you remember early in the game, he was stretching out for a for a long run. And they pulled him down from behind on his right ankle. And it might be bothering him a little bit. Third and 13, the ball on the 40 yard line. 409 to go, first half, 31 nothing, Louisiana Tech. what the Owls needed and carrying the football is Gatlin. Gatlin knocked out of bounds at the 27 yard line. Greg Gatlin comes up with his second interception of the year and Rice getting its first turnover of the day. Gatlin a junior out of Houston returned it 34 yards after the ball was tipped. And you see McCown here looking over the middle and you see the tip there on the lineman get a hand on. Actually that's the receiver tips it up. That's Dave who had a hand on it. It tipped up right to Gatlin, who returns the ball nicely for the for the Owls. And the Owls come up with the ninth interception of the season as a team. And yeah, it's pretty grim for Rice, 31 nothing. But if they can get on the board with a touchdown here, even with their running offense, they still have a whole half to try to get back into it. Watch out, Poop in trouble on the reverse. Got a little room now and a block. Got the first down across the 15. He's inside the 10. And Gavin Booth tackled by Leonard and Gray after picking up 15 yards on a play that looked like it might be a nightmare turns into a dream. Well, Chris Van Hoy almost beheaded him back there in the backfield on the pitch. The reverse pitch here, you're going to see Henderson pitch it back to him. Does a nice job there, but 96 comes into the picture. And oops, got right through him. Gavin Booth turns the turns corner. Hey, it's green grass ahead of him, and it's a pretty good game for the Owls. First and 10 at the 11. Now they run the option game. Henderson with the pitch. Have to right hard, though, as he gets to the 8-yard line. And Willie Shepard and also Trevin Brown making the stop for Louisiana Tech. Yeah, one of the things I'm pretty impressed with today on this football team for Louisiana Tech is their speed on defense. Their defense closes to the football very well from the secondary spot, and, and everybody just pursues her. You see all the blue shirts going to them? Take like another look at the reverse play with Gavin Booth. Second and six from the seven as Rice catches the play from the sidelines, and Henderson calls it out. And they line up in the bone and hands it off to Tyler. He got to the five. Beck, I beg your pardon, as Robbie Beck carrying it from the fullback slot that time. And the Owls with the clock moving, 2.43 to go. Dixie Davis making the tackle. And it'll be third down and four, the ball on the five. The fake to the fullback. Hawkins in trouble and a loss on the play as Vince Hawkins nailed by Leonard and Louisiana Tech, they're not acting like they've never seen an option game before, are they? Tom Masella has his defense prepared for this option attack. He's done a nice job all week. Watch the, pers the pursuit here from the defense. Everyone has got their assignment taken care of. I got the quarterback there. I get off the block. I'm going to make the play on the pitch. Got people coming from the inside, the pursuit. 
good job getting in the backfield of Rice and forcing them here into a field goal situation, Bill. Yeah, and I know some folks are thinking, well, you got to be kidding me. You're down 31 to nothing. But there is still half the game to go. And Ken Adfield said, well, all right, I went for it on fourth and one at my 15 and got hammered and gave him one touchdown. Let's get some points on the board first. So they'll try the 25-yard field goal attempt. And Skeen splits the uprights. Brandon Skeen hits this field goal, and Rice is on the board. It is 31 to 3, with 132 to go in the half. And that's a turnover. The defense does a good job of getting the ball back to the offense for Rice, and they take it down. Hey, it's not the touchdown, but it's three points on the board, and Ken Hatfield is going to take his bunch in at halftime and talk about that. Hey, that's what we need to do, defense. We need to get more turnovers. Remember, a week ago against Auburn, Luke McCown threw five interceptions. Now, if they, if they play pretty close to the best in the second half, as I, as I suspect, there may not be that many opportunities, but Louisiana Tech is not going to change their offensive philosophy. They're going to throw the football, so there's going to be opportunities for Rice defense. Yeah, good point that, uh, as you mentioned, they may run a little bit more, but McCown has still been susceptible to some interceptions, and that they're obviously going to have to have that happen to get back into this game. But you never know, that is for sure. So Rice takes advantage of the turnover to get three points, and Skeen makes it 31-3, to three, and the Isles will, turn, will kick it now. And now what they're going to be concerned with is it, you know, La Tech's not saying, well, yeah, we'll just run out the clock, go in the locker room. They'll be looking to get six more. No, if they get set up with good field position on the kick return, there's nothing to say they won't throw the ball down the field and put something else on the board. Curry back on one side, Franklin on the other. And it is taken and then down at the 20-yard line. And a little confusion there as it looked like the receiver on the play either a signaling fair catch or one that was Davis. And Louisiana Tech will get the football though, first and ten on its own 19 yard line. Well, if you want to be caught up on what's going on in the day's sports activities, then all you need to do is check in to the Southwest Sports Report. Nightly at 10 o'clock right here on Fox Sports Net. Today we'll have all the wrap-up of the region's football games as well as look at the Major League Baseball World Series action. Luke McCown today, 16 of 25 for 241, two touches and one interception now. And Smith carries the football. Louisiana Tech may be content to run it out. Let's see them. Pick up a yard or so. The second and nine, the ball at the 20-yard line. Tackle that time, Nick Sabula, the junior out of Houston. And the Louisiana Tech is probably going to be content here to let the clock run down, running the ball, and let this half expire. They've put up 31 points on the board against this Rice defense. Probably got them back on their heels right now, Bill, and reeling a bit when they go into halftime, have to make some adjustments. Second and nine. And they do run it again with Joseph Smith. Smith, who scored a pair of touchdowns today. That was sandwiched around a SCOBY 35-yard field goal. And then Caps and Curry got TD receptions against this Rice Club. And the route was on, 31-0, before an interception by Gatlin set up Skeen for a 25-yard field goal for the Owls' first points of the day. Pretty quiet group as they contemplate the intermission. Inside 30 seconds to go. Smith will carry the football one more time, and that will be the final play of the first half. And the homecoming crowd has been treated to quite a whipping of the Rice Owls. They've whipped their feathers pretty good so far. It is 31 to 3 with La Tech rolling by 28 here at the break. And Disappointed and at many times frustrated. Ken Hatfield heads to the locker room to see if he can get his owls turned around. And we'll have a chance to catch up with Coach Picknell in just a moment for the Louisiana Tech side. As McCown is thrown for two touchdowns, Smith has run for a pair. And... Louisiana Tech, I think we're all a little surprised. I thought it would be a closer game, Gary. Well, they've done everything they wanted to do on offense, and their defense has played superb against the option attack of the Owls. And 
really nothing really to complain about for Big Nell the, as a head coach. And let's see what he has to say with Kevin. Ready, guys. All right, let's send it down now to Kevin right, Eschenfelder. Doug. All right, thanks very much, guys, Coach. You got to be. You told me about the scout team and uh, what they. Bulldogs putting it on Rice 31 3 as we get ready for the start of the second half. Let's go to Kevin Eschenfelder with Rice coach Ken Hatfield. All right, thank you, Bill, here with uh, head coach Ken Hatfield. What's the message at halftime? Obviously, you're down 31 to 3. How do you keep these guys up? The biggest thing I told them they won the first half. We need to win the second half. The biggest thing we're doing, we're not executing our option like we got to. We got to throw the ball and uh, complete passes when they're open. We didn't. They did a great job. They made some big catches, third down long conversions. And uh, we just got to we got to score on the first drive. We'll win this game. All right, good luck in the second half. All right, head coach Ken Hatfield, Bill Land, back upstairs to you. All right, Clint Hatfield, thanks, Kevin, with the return. And if they're going to score on the first drive of the second half, we certainly would like a little bit better field position. And he brings it out for the Bulldogs to the 18-yard line, where it'll be first and ten. And uh, I like his confidence. Don't know if I share it, Gary, but uh, obviously his ball club. I'm sure he delivered a stern message that it's got to turn around. It's got to turn around right now if we're going to make a comeback. Well, he's got to be the leader of that football team and go in and give them something to shoot for. That is to score on their very first drive, and he challenges offense to do that. Out of the shotgun this time as Henderson hands it off, and Hatfield backs his way across the 20 to the 21, picks up three. It'll be second down and seven. Hatfield and Lewiston, Florida. Ran for 982 yards his senior year and nine yards per carry and scored 13 touchdowns overall. Redshirted last year, but a nice addition to this team. Second down and eight. The pickup of two. Turn the quarterback. And it's complete. 45-50. A flag is thrown. If the play stands, it'll go to the Louisiana Tech. 40-yard line as the pass complete to Gilbert Okoronkwo, who had eight catches coming in on the year. Well, I'm afraid they're going to take it away from Gilbert Okoronkwo. What he does is he uses left hand. Actually, they're calling it against the defense. A little oh. surprising. Looked like on this, on this, from this angle that he was pushing off. Watch his left hand. He pushes him around, then he gets behind, but they're calling that against the defense. Guess they're impeding the runner's progress of the receiver. Not allowing him to get him. Here's an isolation on him. Take a look here. There's the hand, the contact downfield. The referee had thrown it before Okoronko makes his arm over. It's a pretty good call by the official. And Rice takes advantage of it. First and 10 at the 41. So they get the 39-yard pass play. And again, Hearn keeps it this time. He's got a first down on the option as he rolls to the 30-yard line. Bobby Gray made the tackle. Well, nice job of play fake inside. They do the delay draw fake inside, and Herm, who reads the defensive end on the right side, goes around the corner for a first down. Ken Hatfield's got a pretty good play coming out here. Two of them in a row now with the big pass. He said his receivers have to catch, and now his offense has to execute. They do run the no huddle, even though they run the option game, so that does give them one opportunity to speed things up in a game like this where time is certainly going to be of the essence. And... Ellsworth makes the tackle on Hatfield as he is stopped at the 26-yard line. And Got a loser to bull tag, bull tag down on the field. Take a look at some halftime highlights, and we'll uh, check out the injury for you in just a moment. It's been all Louisiana Tech as McCown is thrown into the peg. We helped set up the first score of the day. Delvin Bray does a nice job of bringing it down, and then the pitch here to Joe Smith, and he powers in for the first score of the ball game. Louisiana Tech commanded this game early. Frank Thompson comes on the end around in reverse. Thompson does a nice job here coming around and sets up the second score. And again, it's Smith. Two on the ground for Smith. And then the big fumble here, Rice does, and Bobby Gray, the defensive free safety, picks it up and almost takes it in for the score, but on the next series here, you see the Caps, the big tight end, is wide open in the end zone for the Bulldogs. And then on a fourth and one, Rice on their own 15, no. Good job by the middle linebacker coming in and making the play, and they capitalize on the next pass. McCown brings it across to Curry, who catches it in the end zone in traffic, and a big score. And then Gatlin comes up with a pick on the interception, 
and Rice thought there might be a little bit of light at the end of the tunnel. They ended up settling for a field goal, and it's 31-3. But now, live in the second half, Rice first possession, and 